Okay, we're ready. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the computer science and computer engineering track, which is part of the uh, CCA conference. Uh, I am Dr. Adan Jose Garcia, and I will be uh, the chair of this session. Today, we will have four presentations, and uh, uh, we, will, we will start uh, with the first one. Uh, during the first uh, 15 minutes, will be for presentation. And then we will have five minutes for questions or comments. Uh, the first presentation uh, will be uh, presented by Marisol Vera Arellano. Uh, and uh, she will present a talk uh, which is entitled Discovering a Class of Workflow Nets for Reduced uh, ex Exceeding Language. Uh, whenever you are ready, Marisol, please uh, share your screen or start the, the presentation. Okay. You can see my stream. Yes. Yes, we can see your uh, your screen. OK, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marisol Vera from Simvestad Unidad Guadalajara. The work I'm going to present deals with the process discovery. It has been developed in collaboration with the professor Ernesto Lopez. Uh, the paper is in the context of the process discovery where a model is built from a set of event sequence. Two approaches are followed. The process identification approach that the discover sequence petri nets mm -hmm. and the process meaning approach that the discover a sequence petri net called workflow nets. The presentation is organized as follows. First, I'm going to present the context of the work and the current problem statement. Then, I will describe the method for the discovering workflow net with the reduced surplus language. And afterward, I will present some implementation results. And finally, I will give some conclusion remarks. Uh, okay. Uh, we are dealing with the, the discovery business process where the aim is to obtain models that represent the actual behavior regarding the logistic of the process. And the discovery model are workflow net as a club of Petronet. Regarding the precision, it is a quality measure of the model that evaluates the Ethereum language of the model with respect to the event log. In this example, we have two different models uh, that replay the even log lambda, which has four traces. The language of first model has eight traces. That is four more traces than the even log. That's the precision is 0 0.5. On the other hand, the second model replaces only the traces of the even log. This model has a perfect precision. Now, the objective of this work is to define a method to discover how life precise a workflow net. In a fair approach, we address a subclass model called block structure workflow net. In this paper, uh, we are focusing on a block with how uh, cycles. Then the problem statement or the discovery constraint to the following two problem uh, where two assumptions are held. One is that the traces have the same even label alphabet, and the second is that the every traces start with the even label S and with the able 
and with the even label Y. Now I'm going to present the method to discover model with low Etherian language. This is an outline of the method. First, the even precedent relation represent as a graph is obtained from the traces of, of the even log. From this relation, a Petri net uh, stain machine is built. And then from the knowledge of the number transition, a cycle net is created. It is a marked graph that executes once all the transition. Finally, the parallel composition of, of these nets yields the complex workflow net that replaces at the traces of the even log. Now I'm going to explain the stage of the method. The first step is to represent the precedent of the event in the traces. The pair A and B um, states that the event A is observed before B in some traces. Then the relation uh, uh, R expressed all the event precedent at the event precedent. And this graph represents the relation. Afterward, the precedent net is built from the even precedent graph. And for this net, first we use one transition uh, for each event symbol, and we rely the two transition of a pair in the relation to a place. Here you can see in this partial net. Uh, the event precedent regarding the first trace. And this is done for all the pairs in the relation. At the end, we can obtain a Petri net that is not a steel machine. Uh, here you can notice uh, that the several transitions have more than uh, one input arc. And this leads to deadlock. Then this model is regrading to obtain a PetriNet state machine by applying a simple procedure that duplicate transition and assign the same label. Here, this transition label with A has two input art. Then we add a new transition whose output place is that of the output place of the original transition. Then the new transition is labeled with the evil symbol A. This rewriting procedure is applied to all the transition that have more than one input arc. And then the result net is a PetriNet state machine. The obtained net can be reduced using a minimization uh, technique for the determining finite automata. Notice that the PetriNet state machine is close to a de deterministic automaton. It only needs to complete the net state uh, function. Then the function is complete and we apply the more minimization procedure. Uh, thus, we obtain a reduced PetriNet that preserves the even pre uh, precedent relation. And now the net state is to build the net that constrains the firing of transition of different label ones. It has the same number of transitions uh, than the even precedent net. In this example, we can see a precedent net that has two transition label with the symbol B and two transition label uh, with the symbol C. And then this net is created uh, to fire ones on, uh, on one transition of different label. Finally, the complete model is obtained through the parallel composition of the previous nets, where the transitions that have the same even label are merged. This model replaces uh, the whole even log lambda and a reduced number of trays not include lambda. Uh, here I show two more examples of the discovery nets. And for this load, the discovery workflow net has a perfect precision. 
In contrast, uh, using other discovery method, this simpler net on the right is obtained, is obtained its precision is a lower uh, 0.6. Uh, on the other hand, in this example, the obtained model has a precision of 0.5. However, the simple model has a worse precision. Now I'm going to outline the implementation of the method and test of the software tool. The algorithm uh, have been code using Python. They are integrated in, with some libraries such as a uh, NumPy, uh, Copy and Graphics for displaying the graph. Uh, this is not reporting the paper. Here you can see the current interface. Uh, in this box, you can enter all the traces of the event log in a simple format. This button uh, allows showing the precedent graph and the different nets created by the method. For this log, contain three traces which can display the graph of the even precedent relation. Here you can see the Petri net uh, state machine corresponding to the relation. Okay, this is the market graph corresponding to the net NC and the final workflow net, the integrated the variable Petri net. In this, uh, in this second example, the lot has two traces. And this is an even precedent graph. And this is a Petri net that is obtained from the graph. Notice that there are transition labels with duplicate events symbols. Here you can see two transition labels with A. Similarly, there are two labels B and two, and two labels D. Consequently, the mark graph NC has the corresponding duplicate transition. Then the final net is displayed. Uh, we have a present a method that discovered that the half life per site workflow nets. Also, the block structure needs seems to be restricted. Such uh, models are often obtained from the business process. Conclusion. The method discovers how high precise a uh, workflow net. The address subclass block uh, seems to be restricted, but such models are often discovered when the event uh, data from the business process are traded. A block net is a bull from the behavior of variant in the process. The proposed technique focus on the enforcement in and precedent of the uh, of the even precedent relation as stated by the traces of lambda and then nc constrains the language of the end precedent consequently the circle language of the final model n is reduced the algorithm are polynomial time and the implement implement software is efficient a precision versus a simple sided the discovery method aims building highlight pre, uh, precise workflow net. The final structure of N uh, can be complete when the lambda and the sigma are large. This is the cost of the building high precise models. In contrast, method that the first uh, generation of N yield a structurally a uh, simple model, which allowed that the execution of many more traces. Regarding the complexity of the discovery model after a number of tests, we can conclude that the highly precise nets are structurally complex. Instead, in structurally simple models have a low precision. This can be noticed in the uh, in this model shown before. In this slide, uh, we can see two more models discovered from the log lambda tree. The first model is obtained by the or metal method, and the other uh, one has been obtained using other discovery method. We can notice again the contrast between the precision versus simplicity. As a uh, as future work, uh, we are interested to extend the method for dealing with iterative traces to obtain cycles in the model. Also, we call relates the constraint regarding the alphabet in the traces uh, by the 
allowing traces with the some different events. And thank you for your attention. OK, uh, thank you very much, uh, Marisol, for your presentation. This is quite interesting. And uh, so first, I would like to know if there are some questions from. Uh, 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 let me see if uh, there is uh, some questions. Anyone has a question from. Uh, uh, first, uh, there is any question from someone that is uh, physical. On, on, or, or uh, that is attending the, the conference via uh, via Teams. Uh, okay, I think that we don't have any questions, but I will I will uh, proceed with some uh, some remarks uh, first that I noticed and some questions that I have, uh, Marisol. Uh, uh, first is. Uh, 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 it's a it's good uh, it's it's good about what you're proposing and also that you show that it's working and you have all, and, and as a result uh, you, you you is this uh, code available to uh, to the research community how they can find this in order to propose or to compare the the proposed methodology uh, with uh, with other methods that may exist in the literature how how someone can find the uh, your uh, implementation. Uh, okay. Well, in in this method, uh, you can uh, I uh, showed uh, in my presentation. You can get a workflow net, and you is a precise with other uh, in the literature. So is more a uh, it it doesn't be a uh, simple in the structure but you can get a good result in com if you will have a comparative with the other method and is it available in some place at some repository uh, in your website or someone else i couldn't find the the link in, in the paper uh, but i would like to know if it is available to uh, uh, people from from the from uh, the uh, other people can use your methodology. Is that uh, is that my question? Excuse me, can you repeat the, the question, please? I I can uh, listen because I have problem with the Wi-Fi. Okay, maybe it's maybe it's uh, my connection. Is is the implementation of your methodology available uh, on internet? Uh, yes, I when. Uh, I we create a, a a web and we share our URL and and you can uh, try with different register and and that's it. Okay. Uh, uh, another question that I have is that um, it's very interesting the, uh, the the merging that you do in the first stage and this in the second stage to get. Uh, what you call an efficient methodology for the for, for the creation of the different uh, workflow nets, and in under circumstances, uh, uh, did you try your uh, uh, your proposed methodology? Because I can see that that for your examples, you use a, a few number of uh, traces of events to test your methodology. But what will be the maximum number of of events or traces that you that your methodology will manage to uh, to do. Uh, I use uh, ten traces, but with different weight. So I would like to try. I I use my implementation software with different testing, but I I think that I'm going to finish my implementation implementation in two weeks, but currently it uh, replay the traces and in a good behavior. OK, and um, 
Uh, just another more, I think that we don't have any more questions, so I will proceed with another question is, how is, is there any way to validate that you are creating the most efficient, the most efficient uh, uh, workflows for a specific case? Is there a way to validate it? Because I know that you are using the precision to say, to say, okay, this, uh, uh, this uh, network that I created is better than that, this other one, but is there a way that, uh, that, that you can validate uh, the results that you are obtaining? And also, uh, at some, I think that in your slide 25, you said that you compare the, your methodology or the output of, of your method with uh, another method, which is this other method that you compare with? Uh, I, I... Well, I weigh the efficiency of my method with the precision, and and I use mm -hmm. other model of the different method, a uh, combiner in the other work uh, of the past, and and I can if we, uh, see a big difference with the precision and with this quality, and and I, I think it's a a good method because and. In the most uh, exercise, uh, I have a good precision with my method and and in comparative with the others. Okay, okay. Uh, th thank you, Marisol, for uh, for your presentation and your uh, comments and your feedback. I'm sure that uh, uh, th there is a lot of potential in this work. And uh, uh, please share with us the link where we can find out your. Uh, uh, your uh, the code so that it's available to the research community and so on. And, and uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, uh, we will continue with the next one. Um, I don't know if you have a final comment to do. Otherwise, we we'll, uh, we will continue. Uh, you can be continued. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marisol. Okay, uh, we will continue with the next presentation. Uh, this is uh, called uh, Supplier Classification by Applying uh, Auto Machine Learning. So uh, please uh, start your presentation when, whenever you are ready, please. Will you give me the, the screen sharing? Ah, thank you, Doctor. Okay, just in a moment. I think that can you see my presentation? Uh, yes, we can see it. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much for, for being here. Thanks for the opportunity to present our results. I tell about our research entitled Supplier classification by applying automated machine learning. The authors in this work are Daniel Hernandez, Eddie Sanchez, Arnul Fernandez, and me, Cecilia Loesa. We are from the Artificial Intelligence Laboratory from the National Technological Misantla. The presentation will have these contents. I will begin with the background. I will spend some time on materials and methods. Then I discuss our results. And finally, I will conclude with the findings and future work. The motivation for this research is that today companies want to stay competitive. They are forced to implement strategies in areas they consider important for their functions. One activity important is choosing the appropriate suppliers. Also, we lie near a citrus region of the state of Veracruz, Mexico. Veracruz takes the second place in lemon production nationally. Hence, the motivation is addressing 
the problem of a citrus exporter to identify the best supplier, considering the parameters established, established by the exporter. In the state of the art, we can conclude that there are not words related to Persian limon suppliers. Classification. And our contribution is using computational techniques to classify suppliers' records. Specifically, we employ automated machine learning. Our research is established in experimental machine learning. Our proposed solution was to apply automated machine learning. We use the method of Thornton and collaborators, known as AutoWeka. We have selected this method because it addresses the problem of simultaneous selection of algorithms and parameters. Now we will see the materials and methods used in this work. To carry out the experiments, we acquired 786 records of suppliers that provide to the requirement of Persian lemon in a citrus exporter. Historical records were collected during the years 2014 to 2018. From the Veracruz and Tabasco states, as the main producers of Persian lemon. The historical records were grouped by production area and production season. Production area north, center, and south. Considering that the citrus harvest occurs in two chronological times high season and low season production. The historical records results in the generation of six data sets, high north, high center, high south, low north, low center, and low south. Some of the attributes of six data sets are shown in the table. For example, we consider the year in which production was obtained. Quality is a categorization of the fruit based on the size of a lemon. The specification was the categorization of fruit based on preselection characteristic. One of the year in which the production was obtained and supplied. You can see at the picture the supplier classification process. Considering the data sets grouped by production season and production area. The data sets for training and testing were constructed employing cross validation with a division for ten folds. Percentage split of sixty six percent for training and representative sample. The automated model selection and hyperparameter optimization method implemented through AutoWeka was used to select the best classification algorithm. AutoWeka allows determining the algorithm with an optimal generalization. To evaluate the performance confusion metrics through positive rate or recall, false positive rate, precision, if measured, and receiver operating characteristic curve area were used as evaluation metrics. In the confusion matrix in each column, the number of predictions of each class is represented, and each row represents the real values. The parameters used are true positive, false positive, 
false negative and true negative. The confusion matrix allows calculating the true positive rate. The classification of correctly instances. On the other hand, false positive rate represents the rate of incorrectly classified negative instances. The precision gets the fraction of instances classified in the positive class that is in fact the positive class. It measures captures the properties of true positive rate and precision into a single measure. A personal computer with Windows 8.1 Pro system, Intel i3 processor, and 4 gigabytes RAM. The software used was the Guayacato Environment Knowledge Analysis, or WECA, to implement AutoWECA. Now I, I will comment on the results obtained. The automatic model selection hyperparameter optimization method after experimentation allow classifying records of six datasets. High north, high center, high south, low north, low center, and low south. According to the true positive rate for the dataset high north, The best percentage corresponds to the criterion representative sample. On the other hand, for the data set high center, high south, and low center, the best sampling criterion was cross validation of 10 faults. It's observed in a general way that the best Sampling criterion was cross validation. Times three of, of six data sets performed the best. The worst performance was obtained in the high center data set that contains 17 classes. Overall, the performance are considered good. In most cases, the true positive rate and and precision were superior to the 80%. Now I will choose the conclusion. The focus of this study was to propose employing the automated model selection and hyperparameter optimization methods for classifying suppliers of a citrus region, specifically from the states of Veracruz and Tabasco. It was possible finding the best classified algorithm for each data set in this study. Also, it was determining the best performing sampling criteria, obtain validation metrics, and identify the supplier with the best classification in a supply area. As future work of this research is considered developed a software tool that implements our results for classified Persian lemon supply, perform classification by exploring another algorithms, identify other case studies of citrus region to study the behavior in another scenario. It's all for the presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Cecilia. Uh, are there any questions uh, that uh, you have for Cecilia? Okay, let's see if uh, someone writes down a question. In the meantime, I. I, I would like to ask you uh, some uh, uh, some comments uh, or uh, yes, some comments that I have. Uh, first is, what can you tell us about the 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 data sets that you have in terms of uh, do you have 
uh, how is that, uh, who is uh, recollecting this information? And um, why did you decide to separate your, uh, your data in different regions? And uh, uh, just to give us an idea, uh, how many records do you have in your in your databases, for instance, because you show information about how many classes do you have, uh, the different regions that you have, but what can tell us, what uh, can you tell us about the different records that you have and why did you decide to separate your data set in these different regions? It is because maybe you want to see what is the best uh, a classifier in the in the best uh, supplier for each one of the of the different regions. I don't know what can what uh, what can you tell us? Thank you. We we selected these these criteria to separate in different season and regions because where requirements from the a citrus exporter. This citrus exporter is near to, to Misantla. It's located in Martinez de la Torre. Okay, and how many how many records do you have, uh, more or less, uh, for each one of your different data sets? More or less, the, the records were about 15. 50. Uh, fifth, uh, you mean how many, uh, for instance, how many patterns do you have in your database? How many patterns uh, in average or uh, 15 or, or 50? You said 50? 15. The, the total or, of records was 780 seats for all records. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Uh, um, and um, and uh, and just and uh, what is um, what is your major conclusion that you can do? Uh, for instance, what of the uh, what what of the regions you think that uh, that is uh, what will be the the main message to take from from your study? Because as I can see, you performed this, you did this study just to uh, just to see uh, uh, what is the best methodology and the best parameters in a certain domain. And uh, so, uh, what is the, ma the major conclusion that you can uh, do from your research in this uh, in this domain? The the conclusion depends of the data set and throughout the 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 method of automated machine learning, we identify different configurations for each data set. This configuration can be affected by, by the number of classes at the sampling criterion. In the most cases, we we got the best performance using cross validation. Okay, and another main objective was to identify what are what uh, were the best uh, suppliers for that for the different regions that you have? Uh, do you think that you can make a conclusions in that direction also, or maybe it's too soon to know uh, or to conclude something? This was a limitation on our study. We consider that for future work. All right, all right, okay. Uh, just um. Uh, uh, are there any questions that uh, that you have for, for Cecilia? Uh, if not, I would like to thank Cecilia for your presentation. It's always it's always uh, really nice to see this kind of studies where you are using data from a specific region and uh, uh, for solving a specific problems. I know that dealing with uh, real world problems, it's uh, it's always uh, a challenging uh, work. So uh, thank you, Cecilia, for your presentation and your work. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, if there are no more comments, we can uh, go ahead with the next presentation. Uh, it's um, uh, this presentation is uh, named Recognition of P300 Wave 
and SSVAP using a capsule uh, neural network. Uh, and it will be presented by uh, one of the authors, uh, Jose Macias Macias. Uh, whenever you are ready, Jose. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to show my screen. You can tell me if you see it. I, I can see your presentation, so and I can hear you well, so you can continue, please. Thank you. Well, I am Jose. I'm going to talk about uh, a work that we create in Tecnológico Nacional de México, Campo Chihuahua. The authors of this paper are uh, Juan Alberto Ramírez Quintana, Alejandro Antonio Torres García, and Maro Ignacio Chacón Murguía. I'm going to talk about the recognition of P300 wave and SSBP using a capsule neural network. The content of the presentation, I'm going to put you in context about what is the P300 wave and SSBP, the data sets that we've used, and the signal processing, then the model and based on the capsule neural network, which is called CAPS N2. Then I'm going to show you the results and after that, the conclusion and future work. Well, first, I'm going to tell you the objective of, of this paper. Well, this project proposes a, met a method with the ability to generalize EEG signals across multiple subjects. The problem that we have in the literature right now is that the, most of the papers um, develop some methods or or methodologies to detect uh, above potentials, but they are making some kind of uh, classification by subject. So at the end, we will have uh, models that are specialized for some subjects, and which is not so good for BSAE development. Also, we want to use the least number of E channels, which is one. Uh, this provides some Com more comfortability to the subjects and develop a method that can be implemented in a brain computer interface. Now, what is a brain computer interface? Well, it, it is a system that codifies brain activity patterns into messages or commands for an interactive application. This system will allow a subject to interact with his environment. We are using um, some brain activity to codify uh, some intentions of the subject to, um, I don't know, put something on or put something off, play music or uh, turn off the, the TV, for example. This brain activity can be generated as P300 wave, which is an event-related potential. And it is presented as a positive deflection in the brain activity after uh, the presentation of an external random stimulus. This deflection will be at, a, uh, at the time of 300 milliseconds when we show the stimulus. In the left side, you can see some boxes flashing. And this P300 wave uh, can be Presented if you look the number one after decent intensifications, we'll be generating um, a wave in some channel of the of the brain. We use the occipital uh, area from the brain because it is related with the visual um, with the visual camp in, in in the with the eyes. And we use. Uh, a paradigm of the presentation of intensifications. We will um, put the boxes to flash uh, 15 times, and the subject has has to start the, the looking at one box of the four. And if you can detect this deflection on the EE signal, you will have um, an intention of the subject that one wants to put something on or 
or want to, I don't know, um, send a, me a message. The P300 wave is, is a form to generate brain activity, but also there is another, another way, which is called SSBP uh, steady state visual evoked potentials, also are related with the visual part of, of the brain. And they are produced by a visual stimulus, but now we are gonna modulate this stimulus on frequency. In this, in this case, in this case uh, we can change the light, the shape, or the inversion color of the shaker board that is in the in the monitor, um, in a kind of frequency. Now the the neurons of the brain will resonate uh, at the same frequency that the stimulus is, is changing, and you can have this kind of signals. In the left side, I show you a uh, uh, e signals, e signal in the time domain with uh, a stimulus of six hertz. Right now, we we cannot see the frequency that we put in the in the box or in the checkerboard. But if we use the frequency domain, we can have a peak at the frequency of the of the stimulus. Using this, we can develop some methods to to detect this and, and create a brain computer interface. At the end, we put four uh, checkerboards with the inversion of color to create a data set using the frequencies of 6.6, 8.5, 6, and 7.5 hertz. Using uh, 12 subjects. Well, how do we uh, obtain these EG signals? Well, we, we use the uh, acquisition device called OpenBSAE using gold cup electrodes located in these areas, FPC A1, which is in the ear, and the OC. The OC will will give us um, a G signal from the visual the visual activity in the brain. For the P300 uh, wave, we use eight healthy subjects uh, with an age from 21 to 20 years. 40, uh, 48 signals, we create um, 12 signals by stimuli. In total, we will have 48 signals for the eight subjects. In the total of the data set, we will have uh, 384 raw, raw EEG signals. The per processing of the P300 wave is to have the EEG signals, then we have to filter the filter the sign up. We used a bandpass filter, uh, motherboard, from 1 to 15 hertz with the good frequencies. Also, we have to normalize um, these, these signals because each each subject has different latency of the of the P300 wave and different amplitude too. Then we made a grouping. This grouping is related with the epoch of the stimuli, stimuli uh, intensification. So if you can see this image, we will have uh, the number one intensification for the number one box. So at the end, we will have uh, 15 intensifications and we get a segment after this intensification of the EG signals and we made a, an average for each box. So at the end, we will have uh, four, four, four signals, uh, each related with the, to each box in the, in the monitor, and only one will have uh, the, the, the positive deflection in, in the EE signal. Then, uh, for the SSBP data set, we use uh, 11 healthy subjects, also with an age from 21 to 20 years. 
we create the same number of signals for eight subjects, and we also use three subjects to validate the method, creating 24 signals. At the end, the data cell will be composed of four peak size uh, total signals, and we made some kind of preprocessing as P300 using a filter, but now the filter is going to be from 5.5 to 9 hertz, which um, are the range of the, of the frequencies that we use to uh, present the checkerboard. And we use the FFT to, uh, to pass the signals from, from time domain to frequency domain. That, that is the data set. Now, in the case of SSBP signals, we want to create a methodology that would be accord with the with the frequencies in, in the data set. So we create an, some kind of base signals. I call base signals because I made a, an average of these signals for each class because if you remember, we create 12 um, EG signals from each each checkerboard. So I know which signal corresponds to what what checkerboard the subject was looking at. So at the end, I will have uh, four lambda signals with the uh, frequency of the checkerboard. 6.6, 8.5, 6 and 7.5 uh, hertz. And then I will compare the EG signal with the base signals that I created uh, using correlation and getting row 1, row 2, row 3, and row 4. This row will be the features to classify. And for both data sets, we use the capsule neural network. And, and we use this, this model because can can create a generalization um, from all the all the signals can qualify the pattern and it is uh, invariant to translation and rotation which we think um, it will help in in the P300 way because if you remember each subject generate different latency and different uh, amplitude of, of the signal. Uh, in the case of P300 wave, we use uh, binary classification with P300 wave and no P300 wave. In the case of, of SSB P signals, uh, there are four possible classes, which is related, each, each, each of them is related to the frequency of the checkerboards. We use uh, their precision tower with NVIDIA GPU uh, 970 for the experiment. Now the result that I want to share you is, is taking some considerations of, of, to compare. These three points are the number of subjects in the data set, the number of EE channels and accuracy. We took the accuracy to compare um, as a metric to compare a bucket potential methods. And the number of subjects, we consider this uh, important because it represents uh, a, statistic, a statistical description of the method and the number of EG channels because it is related with the competitional cost and, and also because a large number of electrodes, electrodes can cause uh, discomfort in the subject. For the P300 wave, um, I have these six methods which use convolutional neural networks, um, uh, fuzzy logic and multi Perceptron uh, neural networks. And as you can see, the number of subjects are basically the uh, same, uh, running on eight subjects, but the number of channels, this is the, the variation. We only use one and we get um, we got the 91% of accuracy, which is not the best accuracy in the table, but the six first methods that I put in the in the table 
they are using classification by subject in the case of P300 wave. Uh, now, if you look CAPS and two, uh, this is a competitive accuracy uh, where you are classificating um, with the signals of all the subjects and you can codify the latency and, and the amplitude of, of the EG signals. For SSBP um, classification, I put five works, um, some recently. Also, they use uh, convolutional neural networks and also some other neural networks. The number of subjects, uh, well, they are some varied. In the number of channels, only two works use one. And if you can see the accuracy, we have the best accuracy um, better than ESSBP, which is a, a multi layer neural network. And we can finally we can recognize across the signals of all the subjects. As a conclusion, um, this, this methodology, Capsin 2, can train, validate, and classify. P300 wave and SSBP uh, signals with the combinations of signals into a single set of data using um, the signals of all the subjects. Also, in the P300 wave detection, uh, CAPSEN2 achieves the third place and first place for the classification of SSBP. The method finds uh, for features from one uh, channel one electrode which use uh, sorry which allows better usability to the BSAE embedded system development also uh, we think that this method can be adapted to any other evoke potentials and key also can be used for uh, motor imagery or, or speech imagery as a future work uh, we want to put this methodology in a embedded BSAE system to make experiments with with um, online um, and more persons. There are my references from the works that I used. That's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jose, for your presentation. Uh, are there any any uh, works? Uh, sorry, are there any questions or comments or feedback from uh, the audience in the campus or or uh, the persons that are attending the conference online? Okay, if. Uh, I will ask a question in the uh, just to see if in the meantime someone uh, get it for answering for uh, making a question or something or making a comment about uh, this work. And um, OK, th thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, it's um, uh, to be honest, this is the first time I heard about these kind of neural networks and um, uh, and I can see that then, then you are using two different data sets. So uh, my first question is how, uh, and as, as I can, I can so from your presentation, uh, you um, construct this, uh, they do these two different data sets uh, under certain uh, parameters, under certain conditions that you, uh, that you and your research team uh, uh, set up. So, um, <clears throat> my my first question is uh, how long uh, uh, did it take to you to construct the construction of these data sets and also so is and my second question regarding the the construction of the data sets are they do you think that are they big enough for making or deriving uh, some uh, final conclusions uh, regarding the results that you obtain can, can you repeat the second question? Because I have some kind of interference. OK, just uh, that given the given the characteristics of your data set, if do you consider that that's 
enough information for uh, uh, for making the conclusions according to the results that you present. And uh, I will uh, I will follow up with another question. But first, I would like to know you. What do you think about this? OK, uh, first, the first question about the time. Um, it took me like. Four months maybe to create both data sets. Uh, it's kind of hard because you have to control all, of all the subjects to follow the the same paradigm to to generate the signals. Um, at the end, well, we have created. And the second the second question, the most complicated case is to detect the P three hundred wave. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the reason that we use uh, the capsule network networks because as, as i said at the beginning the subjects have um, different latency the p300 wave is not always at the 300 milliseconds after the stimulus so using this 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 model um, we think is it, it is enough to detect the p300 wave um, in the case of SSBP, well, if you if you saw, I used uh, only correlation, uh, correlation coefficient um, as a features. Maybe in the future work we will have some problems because it's only one feature, but okay. we can use as um, I don't know if we. We'll be using the time, the signals in time domain. We will have a lot of interference, but we are using a frequency domain. So I think it will be good if we implement this in a BSA system. Okay. Yes, I I understand your point. And uh, uh, from your slide uh, twenty, where you present the different uh, the different characteristics. Uh, why why not all the different methods that you present have the same number of subjects and then and, and, and you use the same number of channels maybe this is a silly question but i didn't understand why okay i couldn't hear so well but i think you asked me for the number of subjects and number of channels why yeah. not all the methods use the same right yes okay the first um uh, with the number of subject subjects, uh, it is commonly in literature that all the authors uh, made his own uh, data sets. So okay. it depends of the of the organization or, or the institute, the time of of the investigation too. Um, also, there is uh, some data sets available to download in the internet, but they are too old. So okay. the devices that they use, uh, well, they are old. So I see. Mm. According to the number of channels. Um, okay, it is because of the characteristics of the different data sets that exist already in the literature. I can see them. Yeah. Uh, and and did you perform any significance tests to see whether or not the proposed methodology, uh, in terms of accuracy? Is there any? Um, uh, maybe there is not a, um, a not a significance. Uh, uh, maybe the methods that you are comparing are uh, maybe good enough for the for the different data sets that you are using. I don't know. Did you perform any uh, uh, significance tests to to see whether or not uh, the the results that you obtain are competitive or perform similar to each other, to each other? No, I, I I have not. Yeah, right. that could be a future future work. Um, it's it's a good question. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, uh, from my side, it's uh, it's all. Uh, Jose, thank you very much for your presentation. I think that there are any questions from uh, uh, there are any questions uh, in the in the chat. So if someone has uh, a question, please don't hesitate to send send them to Jose that and I think that uh, he will be able to answer any questions regarding this presentation. Of course. Okay, thank you very much, Jose.
Thank you to you. <clears throat> OK. okay. Um, we can uh, we can continue with the last presentation of this uh, session. Uh, it, it's called, the presentation is called Data Analysis Application of uh, of uh, a certain data set uh, to apply to a specific case study. The the um, presentation will be given by Andres uh, Hernandez Pineda. Please uh, continue. This is, this will be a presentation on site, so uh, take your time to set up and continue when you are ready, please. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. The authors of the of this work are the Professor Norma Patricia Muñoz Sevilla and the Professor Antonio Moreno Cadenas and myself. Introduction. In Mexico City, aid pollution has gained remarkable relevance due to the health implications of the population. In 2019, the Mexican standard N of N1 17 December 2019 was formalized in order to establish the guidelines for obtaining and communicating the air quality and health risk index. Currently, the government of Mexico City is committed with the monitoring and quality and communicating the results to the population. An analysis of the available data, data of the main pollutants is present, focusing on the days of the environmental, environmental contingency declared in May 3, 4, 6, and 21. The spatial analysis, analysis is of course DIS technology, which primarily includes buffer home analysis, overlap analysis, and with that analysis. It was considered useful to make a distribution, reverse of influence, using the worldwide methodology in order to place this distribution only as a reference standard for the installation of the future monitoring station. Using three software tools for a geographic information system, as well as a pre interactive data visualization software. Provides an analysis of the available data, the main contents to verify the concordance of the data of air quality monitoring network in Mexico City, according with the standard. The software that we use is Quantum Case and an interactive data visualization software named Tableau Public. Here we have the, the organization context of library of a, a GIS. The GIS components of hardware, software, data, and organization context of library. The Tableau desktop architecture, you can see here, Tableau, Tableau architecture is based at Amateur Clean Server Architecture. Uh -huh. Tableau Desktop is an authoring and publishing tool and is used to create shared views on Tableau Server. Here we have a, a table with the categories and colors for the air and fire index according with the standard. Uh -huh. We have five categories for the air quality, good, acceptable, bad, very bad, and extremely bad. Uh -huh. And we have a risk level associated with the air quality, low, moderate, high, very high, or extremely high. According with the standard, the air and health index for sulfur dioxide, we have a We have uh, five levels, good, acceptable, bad, very bad, and extremely bad. Uh -huh. And the risk level, low, moderate, high, very high, and extremely high. And this is the, the average range. 
if we have uh, the the same table, but for some, uh -huh. and we have the same uh, quality items and the means as the same risk level as as a table. Here we have a uh, some uh, summary table with the results for the levels associated with the air quality or made to. Uh, here we have uh, a song air quality bar and the level associated with the risk is high and sulfur dioxide, uh -huh, extremely bad and extremely high the risk. Uh -huh. That's why the the local the local authority decreased the contingency. Uh -huh. that, okay, in this uh, in this picture we have uh, the main location of the air quality monitoring station located inside Mexico City and around Mexico City. We have a, a map with the areas we influence for automatic atmospheric monitoring network. Areas of influence uh, obtained uh, for Borona methodology for the case of, of Rona, showing that the area of, of greater population density of the Ciudad de Mexico are significantly covered only as a reference standard for the installation of future stations. Here we have the reporting levels for sulfur dioxide and ozone by the station of the automatic atmospheric monitoring network. In this case, we use tableau, tableau public for doing these graphs because we have a problem with for example, Microsoft is the Excel because we 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 had a uh, one million of registers in my in my base data. Conclusions. One of the major problems as arise the in in large cities as a city with high demographic concentration is that corresponding to the air pollution. In Mexico City, air pollution has gained remarkable relevance due to the high implications for the population. Even the importance for human health having permanent monitoring on air pollution. Also, the use of modern software tools to process the enormous amount of data generate, <clears throat> generating in real time in full and monitoring becomes imperative. The use of free software tools like your geographic information system and interactive data visualization provides sufficient elements so that anyone who has access to the public data by the Secretary of the Environment of Mexico City can timely monitor the data monitoring the environmental conditions in Mexico City. The data published by the Secretary of Environment of Mexico City for the Declaration of Environment environmental contingency, emphasizing the pollutants of sun, particles, and sulfur dioxide are used to the main target for the contingencies in Mexico City. As a result of the analysis of the subnetwork and market tendency, importance concentration was observed for covering the northern part of Mexico City Needed to investigate the need to include in the monitoring with more redmap, redmap, and redmap networks. Finally, in recent years, an industry is growing rapidly for supporting the needs of modern equipment for the measurements of the concentration of pollutants for real time, monitoring of specific events and equipment for analyze the impact on human health, and all of the above implies one opportunity to, to participate in an industry dedicated to the measuring, analysis, analyzing, and combating environmental pollution.
Thank you. Thank you very much, Andres, for your presentation, uh, for this presentation, uh, which is a real case scenario on how this kind of uh, uh, data analysis can help to derive some conclusions in the in this application with uh, in terms of the air quality and uh, and raise some concerns about uh, how good or how bad is the situation of the quality air in Mexico City. Are there any uh, questions uh, for, for, for for those that uh, are attending the, the conference uh, on site? Or any? Oh, okay, go ahead, please. Juan, if you have a, in, a, in, in only a place a, a big data, okay, big, big values in the, in the contamination, why did you declare from the Mexico the authority declare in the whole? Both city in the conference. Because in the standard, este, you can own a some route. Uh -huh. um, let me show you the graph. According with the standard, when in some station in monitoring a quality station. You you have a, a a a value about the the levels of the contamination like in this for example in this case we have uh, one hundred and seventy two per per million or so. This value corresponds to the Santa Fe station located at the north to the Mexico City. Well, according with the standard, we have to, de to declare the contingency because it doesn't matter if the, the highest uh, value you can take in the, in this, I mean, you don't need to, to have uh, high levels in all the in all the city, only go in the case that in one station you have a high levels, you have to the to decrease the contingency. It doesn't matter the location of the of the pollution station, monitoring the pollution station. If you have few the the high levels, you have to the decrease the contingency. If you have the high levels here, you have to decrease the contingency according with the the standard. In the picture, you need more station in the south of Mexico City, right? Right, that, that's right. Monitoring the quality of a case. In this case, the, the Santa Fe is the monitoring station is located here. Okay, uh, are there any more questions in the on site? Uh, I can see that there are there are no more questions on um, on uh, on on the internet. So I will uh, I will ask you some questions, uh, uh, Andres. And uh, first, uh, if you go back uh, where you present uh, uh, your your table with some results uh, until May um, May yes. So and you mentioned that you have. Uh, more than one million uh, records on your database, so uh, it's complicated to deal with this information or to to deal with this data using a I don't know you mentioned Excel, but I guess that other uh, software uh, similar will be we will present some problems also. So my first question is: uh, 
you have records for uh, for how long, for how many years, or for how months uh, to to obtain these results? For this case, it's only for six months because the monitoring have uh, is is realized by minute, hour, day, month, and year. Okay, I and yes, go ahead. You, you can to get information 24 hours per day, every minute. Okay, okay. and the methodology that you that you do uh, uh, this uh, set setup that you uh, uh, that you are doing with using this uh, public software uh, uh, is it easy to uh, reproduce these results? I mean, uh, if I uh, if we decide to get wh uh, what's the status of of the quality air for tomorrow, it will be easy to to uh, reproduce and get uh, and get some insights uh, using the methodology or your approach that you are following? Yes, because uh, the, the data you can get in the in, in the web. Uh -huh. But uh, we need to, to process the the data because sometimes you can you can get nulls. Uh -huh. And the problem with Tableau Public are the the nodes, the concordance uh -huh. with the nodes. But you and, can and, um, the registries and, and that's it, and put the in the Tableau Public, uh, no problem. And how long you it will take? Hours or minutes? No, it's the, it depends the with the tool, the software tool. With the tool that you are using, how long it takes? One is the 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Okay. And um, and and in this case, you uh, you have access to this. Uh, uh, sorry for my uh, for my question. Maybe uh, uh, do you do you have access to this data because you have an agreement with uh, 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 I don't know with the society that is providing this information or uh, anyone can can uh, have access to this information to this data. It's a public, it's a public information. Is it the public information? Okay, okay. And uh, so, and another is um, again. Uh, this is uh, just questions, uh, general, qu uh, general knowledge questions. Are there any? Um, uh, do you know if uh, other cities in in Mexico? I don't know, Monterrey, Guadalajara. Uh, they are also recording this kind of information in order that you can compare, for instance, uh, or make more general conclusions uh, regarding. Uh, uh, this uh, methodology that you are proposing or following to to get this kind of insight. Uh, yes, the purpose of this methodology is to to get in touch with the local and um, local governments because the at the present time, for example, the the Monterrey, Guadalajara, they they are is, is start. To, to implement the, 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 the application for doing the quality of the of the air. Okay, okay, I see. And and how is the, how is that these results or findings can be used for future decisions? I mean, are you plan? What are the further steps in your research in your methodology to do? What are what are you planning to do with these results? Okay, with the with the results uh, at the present time, uh, we are uh, working in environmental problems, overall uh, pollution in water. And it, the the idea here is to simply to get the the algorithm for for. Uh, for the information that you can get, uh, for example, for flooding, for flu. Yeah. Here in Mexico City, we have a, a very, very nervous problem with the flu. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and we have a lot of information, a lot of 
quantity of, of data. Uh -huh. I see. Um, uh, another final question from my side is, uh, are you are you considering that uh, um, I, I know that you are considering the temporal dimension because because but uh, in uh, machine learning there are specific tools and specific uh, methodologies to deal with time series problems. Uh, are you using or do you know something of if someone is using some of these tools for uh, derive or get some insights uh, about the quality of air in the Mexico City? Is the next step in the in this uh, in this work? All right. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there are any more questions uh, on site or or from teams. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation, um, Andres, and uh, good luck with. Uh, your uh, future research, it's, uh, um, I think that it has uh, very good potential. Thank you very much. And OK, uh, I would like to say thank you to all of you for attending this uh, session. And uh, um, I'm really happy to, to be here and uh, and to have the chance to present all, all of your works. There are very nice uh, papers, very nice contributions. Uh, it was really great to see that there are many real world applications associated with the research in Mexico. And, uh, and thank you very much for, uh, uh, for being here, for your works, and congratulations to all of you. And, um, and thank you very much. Uh, I have to say goodbye from my side uh, here in uh, here in France. It's a little bit late, but uh, I hope that you continue enjoying the conference in Mexico. And for the others that are following the presentation online, also uh, continue uh, looking at uh, different uh, conferences that are being part of this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank you. much, Doctor. José García.